Welcome to the Scale Up Valley podcast, where we bring the best of the best to help you scale your business from 1 million to 1 trillion. Today we have amazing guests. Their names are Paolo Morgado and Anna Paula Reis. Paolo and Anna, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. And Anna, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, who is Anna? And, uh, and after that, let us know a little bit more about Bridgewater before getting to know Paolo as well. Okay, so who am I? Um, I am, I would say, an experienced, uh, past the 50s, so experienced uh, entrepreneur, investor. I've had uh, quite a uh, fulfilled life uh, from the corporate world to uh, the entrepreneur world to the investment. Uh, but basically, if you ask me to, this, to define who I am, I would say I'm whatever entrepreneur. I love uh, finding opportunities in the market and put them to work uh, and uh, help people develop and the companies to grow. So this is basically who I am. Thank you, uh, Anna. Let me introduce again. Today we are with uh, Paul Morgat and Anna Paul Reis, the founders of Bridgewater. Uh, and Paul, what about you? Well, I, as, I, as I think you, you know, I started my career in professional services and uh, uh, I worked uh, basically for multinationals, although uh, also in the real economy by managing a listed company. Uh, so I, I would say that uh, what differentiates me is the, the execution uh, capacity, uh, not only thinking about uh, ambitious goals, but also to execute them, and uh, always uh, a duty uh, on the commercial area because um, I spend most of my life as being the managing director, the CEO of companies, but always with the number one responsibility for sales. I, I love it. And I, I have to disclose that uh, I got to know Paul almost 10 years ago, and he has been my teacher in a model about uh, execution, so that I, that I really love it. And then I got uh, passionate about the topic. And he has been also my mentor since uh, before the beginning of, uh, of Skillet Valley. So, uh, Paulo, publicly, thank you very much. And uh, it's really a pleasure to have you both um, on the show. And, it's a pleasure uh, to have you as, as, as my, well, <laughs> my, mentee, my mentee, I don't know, but that, uh, I think we, it's time that we talk, we, we learn with each other. That's for true. Love it. And I'm, I'm super excited because this week is, is very special for the business world and for me and for both of you, because it's, it's the week where we are uh, presenting Bridgewater to the world. So what is Bridgewater? Uh, Anna, would you like to, to go forward? Sure. So Bridgewater is a company that has a very specific niche, uh, niche of acting, which is growth. Uh, and this uh, company is supported in two platforms, a digital one and a human one. In the digital um, platform, we basically uh, help and support companies to, to um, have uh, credentials, uh, produce and explore and make grow their own knowledge about their competence in the growth area and also their connections. Um, in the human platform, uh, what we do is uh, we help facilitate and accelerate the interactions between sellers and buyers. And for this, we have developed for each of these areas, we have developed two basic frameworks, the Bridgewater 20 uh, levers of growth um, that reproduce this uh, process of interaction uh, from, from sellers with the sellers and, and the buyers, basically, and the, the clients, uh, uh, the company's the relationship to their clients in, in any sector. Um, and the four C's, um, what we, we call the four C's of growth that reproduce the process uh, of go-to-market that we intuitively do, uh, but that we have structured. Uh, so we start with credentials, content, connection, and counseling. As we always have a delay between the recording and the release of, of the podcast, the launch, the official launch would be on the 21st of January, and we are recording this on the 19th of uh, January for, for the ones who are listening to the podcast uh, later on. Uh, 
Paulo, um, let, let's move into this amazing framework uh, that is kind of the, the foundation of uh, Bridgewater that Anna uh, just presented. Uh, those are the 20 levers of uh, growth around the five stages of client engagement. I'm studying them myself, so I've been around your website for a long time to prepare this uh, podcast episode. But uh, I think this would be really, really interesting for our community of VC packet scale-ups and corporate scale-ups, as we like to call them. So let us know a little bit more about the, the framework. Okay. Um, we have just uh, uh, acknowledged the execution part of the project, and especially that we must be objective and based on uh, things that can be measured. So growth is a, a concept that must be uh, landed in something that the companies can control. So the, the first thing that we have, uh, we are not creating anything that uh, by itself is new. We are just putting together pieces that most of the time are dispersed. So the, the, the first five things that we put together together is a normal uh, engagement uh, uh, cycle with the clients, starting with the attraction of the company, then the acquisition of clients, then the uh, average revenue per client, then re uh, retention, and then referrals. Nothing new about it. The, the only thing that uh, we think is very new is that we uh, developed four levers or levers for each of the five stages and uh, it is around these 20 levers for uh, by uh, the, the five stages that we create a language between in sellers and buyers. Because imagine that the buyer that told you, well, I need to grow. Well, you can shoot in any direction. So if you don't have a framework, you can start to say, well, you must insist on the sales, uh, sales force effectiveness. You must do more advertising. You must do this. You must do that. And it, it is a round conversation with any, uh, I would say, grip uh, to, to give rise to something innovative. So basically, the 20 levers of growth are uh, the, being uh, uh, were developed. Uh, are our base of content. They are fulfilled not only with academic knowledge, but also with all the content that they as, uh, are, will be created by our, our participants, articles, and so on. So this is what differentiates uh, Bridgewood from a mere broker. We are not a broker. We are a, a content developer around the 20 levels of growth in which we put a lot of academi academic knowledge, but also uh, uh, a lot of action learning knowledge, okay? I love it. And for the ones who are kind of understanding, so how, how do we have the 20 uh, levers of growth? Those are the five stages. And in each stage, you have four uh, levers of, uh, of growth, right? So across attraction, acquisition, ARPU, retention, and referrals. I'm kind of becoming a student of the methodology, as, as you can see. Uh, Anna, would you, would you like to add something on, on the framework? Uh, anything else? Yes, um, I would like to add that uh, when we talk about levers of growth, we mean tools and strategies that we have studied and are studied as the ones that best uh, serve the stage where the company is versus its relationship with the client. So we're not saying that they're the only ones, but if you want to be effective, this uh, what we are proposing is don't uh, um, waste your time and, 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 and on an ad hoc way. Follow the levers. If you know where, we, where you are, uh, those would be more effective for you to relate to your clients. So that's basically what we are to, uh, talking about. Then um, this process relates to, as Paolo was saying, any kind of of relationship process between a company and their own clients. Uh, but then we also have um, another way of looking at it, another framework, framework which is also important, 
for us to consider, which is how do we develop? How do we follow this growth journey? And then we have the, the second framework that we have developed, which is the four C's of, of growth. So every time we, we, we meet someone, again, what we're doing is to put into a process and making clear something that is uh, already happening in, in, in the real world in our relationships. So first, I want to know who you are, so the credentials. Then when I know who you are, where you come from, I trust you. We want to know what you do, the content. And then when we have both, I can start to connect the connection, so the possibility of doing business. And the last one, I want to continue this growth. So I will start having counseling and exploring each other's network to grow together. That's basically that. As I recap, the four C's, growth journey, credentials, content, connections, and counseling. Exactly, you're learning. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, I need to be prepared to, to have this uh, amazing most monsters in my uh, in, in the show today, so I, I, I need to be ready to to host you. So uh, amazing way to start with two interesting frameworks. As as you said, uh, we have discussed it a lot on the show the importance of creating a revenue machine for each stage of growth, and that revenue machine needs to have a, a, a retention engine and an acquisition uh, engine. Right. And if we don't work on both sides of, of the equation and of the machine, uh, it will beat us at a certain point where we, we might face a growth ceiling uh, or a, a wall that we are not able to surpass or that starts working against us. For instance, the importance of customer success and, and retention or not having um, eye share. So let's let's move into the three critical ingredients to scale that we always discuss on the show. You are more than invited to challenge them. So we keep editing uh, those three ingredients with our guests. Um, number one, radical focus. Number two, world-class leadership slash team slash culture. I keep adding new layers to that second one. And the third one, culture of execution. Starting with the first one, radical focus. Uh, we all know that growth is very counterintuitive. Uh, so typically we believe that we have more people, we have more resources, we are in more markets and we can start having the temptation to try to be everything to everyone. So attack all the geos at the same time, attack all the verticals at the same time, serve the businesses of all sizes at the same time. And, and this is something very normal that we are already very educated in a startup that we need to find a niche, but in a scale up, we kind of forget those principles and we believe and we start expanding instead of closing. So we, we start opening the funnel instead of closing and doubling down on um, what works. Paulo, uh, what, what's, what's your view and how do you relate the levers of growth with the importance of radical focus or, or not relating, uh, going the direction that you would like to, to share with the audience some of the lessons uh, advising other, other companies in, in your career? Okay, let me start to, to talk about focus uh, in another perspective before going there. Um, the first thing that uh, it's a radical focus uh, when you are creating a company is that during one year, you don't think about anything else every day until your model works. This is the first radical focus. And I know few people that are able to maintain this level of concentration on the model. OK, I remember that parts of the model that today are critical for the development were creating while I was cycling. OK, but this is the first radical focus. OK, then uh, about the positioning, uh, we have uh, one first niche, with the, which is we are only dedicated to growth. OK, we do nothing else. Uh, then grows. We don't do reorganization, we don't do cost reduction, we don't do all, uh, I would say, aspects or uh, topics of the management science. We do grows. Why? Because we think that there is a need on the market. And Anna can talk about other types of focus, like the geographical one uh, related to company size and so on. But I would say uh, that we are a growth company, nothing else. And this is our niche. Okay. 
of it. And, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, let me tell you about the uh, geographical focus. So we have uh, these two sides of the table. We have from the one hand, the buyers. So the companies that want to grow and are willing to look at the market and look for um, other companies that can provide them uh, solutions, innovative solutions for them to grow. In the buyers, we have a geographical focus, which is Iberia. We want companies that are medium-sized to large-sized companies operating in Portugal and or Spain. So we have this uh, very clear geographical focus for the moment. Then on the other side of the table, so the sellers, and the sellers are these other companies that have as competences one or more of they sell services that are core in one or more of the 20 levers of growth. So, and those are, that, that's really, really very clear. Only companies that are sellers and that fit in this description of, of uh, the 20 levers of growth. And in here, we're not looking at the geographical split. We, want, we look at the competences. We want the best, and no matter where they are located uh, and independently of size. So we want to make this match work so the ones that want to grow by looking at uh, services and innovative solutions and the ones that can provide them no matter where they are. So we are looking a lot at, uh, to services and services that are mainly digital because uh, uh, we need to do this, this match. Just one more thing to add, which is, uh, we are not focusing on, uh, focusing on the sector, at least uh, uh, when and we now. are excluding some sectors like the public sector, which uh, we don't address, but we are not focusing on one sector on the depart uh, because we believe in cross fertilization. We believe that the telco sector can bring uh, uh, innovative solutions to financial services and so on. Uh, but obviously the, that uh, as we start to work, uh, some clusters start to form and, and the goal, uh, we will focus not um, by uh, a initial decision, but by a consequence decision where the market wants to go. Right. And, and I like it's kind of defining a domain or defining an horizontal to focus on. I think that this was one of the points that most challenged my way of thinking instead of focusing on a vertical, focusing on an horizontal or in a domain, like the growth domain, uh, as you were uh, explaining. Uh, and There's one thing that I would like to add on, on Paolo's comment, because what Paolo was mentioning was exactly a way of focusing. We are focused on where the market is going to take us. So uh, I think that's very important. That, that's a great point. It's the discipline of going in the direction of the vision and also the flexibility to listen what the market is, is telling us, right? So it's, oh. It's very easy to start to be attached to the vision or to the assumptions that we make when we start the company and not be flexible to what the reality of what the customers are asking us. Yeah. And, and also having the courage to say no if, if that direction doesn't uh, fit the, the vision, but not being attached to that vision uh, that we are not able to be flexible and find out other um, opportunities. It's curious because uh, it's all about um, execution and, and execution is a lot about unblocking some of our beliefs and, and some of our internal myths. And I think that that's the difficult part of growth is we can't, if we are not growing, the company can't grow. So that, that's why it is only possible to grow if we grow first as human beings and as, as teams, right? And what a better introduction to bring the second uh, ingredient, uh, world-class leadership slash team uh, slash culture. Of course, teams have different structures and different iterations across different stages of growth. Uh, company that starts, that has been funded, it's all about the founding team. Later on, it's, it's the first leadership team that might be a functional oriented team uh, later on another leadership team that might be, might be more uh, matrix uh, organization so there are different stages um, of growth so what what are some of your uh, lessons learned about you know leading forming building teams for each stage of growth uh, in the in the clients that you have worked with uh, or in other professional experiences uh, during your career. And we can start with you now. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, th- teams and people and the way that they, they work and integrate are absolutely fundamental uh, and at the root of success of any company. And, and this is also uh, what happens to us in our case. Um, and because of that experience of how we work, we are, uh, both of us have approximately uh, 30 Uh, years of experience. So we've been there, we've done that, uh, we've been through a lot of uh, different situations, which helps us to um, understand the market. And Paolo and I, we know each other for more than 20 years now, uh, which is also important because there is a complementarity. Uh, We are very complementary in the way that we look at uh, not only the, the business, fundamentally the business, but also the the the, the way that we should uh, position ourselves versus the market, uh, and, and particularly on this growth mindset that, as you said, uh, uh, Mike, very well said, growth is not about growing your company only. It's about your personal development also. And that's something that both Paolo and I, and, 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 and if you look at what, where we've been and what we've done and the different positions that we have assumed, the academic uh, uh, journey that we've both uh, have shows that 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 general, um, very um, felt and lived uh, growth mindset. So uh, company uh, uh, teams need to have that. There needs to be a glue. There needs to be this cultural uh, focus. And culture means a, a way of acting because you feel that what you're doing has a reason and there's a way to uh, to express yourself and you have your fit in this biggest uh, um, uh, picture. So Paul and I, because we, we 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 know each other for more than twenty years, we have worked together. Uh, we have shared a lot of lunches together, always talking about growth. There had to be something. So um, this is what's really important that you know that you are complementary, that your experiences are complementary, and uh, and it's very important uh, because we have done sales. We have this strategic mindset. We know technology. Um, And uh, we're not new to this. So uh, we have a very good feeling of how the market is. And that's what a team must have. Absolutely. I think this complementarity uh, across the the founding team is so important. Paul, what would you add? And what are your thoughts about uh, building teams for each stage of growth? Well, it is not uh, something that uh, is quite common what I am going to say, but uh, uh, client centricity is something that the company must uh, put a- at the top of the culture, obviously, because today you still assist to a marketing department working uh, in uh, silos when you compare to a sales department, okay? And I see marketing and sales as a line. And if, if you have a segment of marketing which is large, we need a segment of sales that could be shorter. But if you have a, a little segment on the market, you must have a big uh, uh, segment for the sales. So they are complementary. Uh, and uh, uh, you know that one of the things that we assist more and more is that big organization are uh, struggling with, with bureaucracy, okay? Uh, the divisions among the different departments don't let uh, uh, organizations breathe, and basically uh, they do not innovate because they don't work together. Obviously, when you, we go to LinkedIn, you talk a lot about uh, uh, cross fertilization, leadership, uh, uh, climate change, this type of things. Okay, but at the end of the day, the organizations still see uh, the different departments as serving the company itself, not serving the client. So, uh, teams. Uh, the, the type of profiles that uh, we need more and more are those that can see in each piece of their work, the client. If they are not seeing on their work, the value added for the client, then I would say that they are just working for the company. And when you work just to serve the company, you are a bureaucrat and the bureaucrat is not an innovative guy or a creator. So I would not be a client for a bureaucrat, okay? unless uh, I'm talking about the public sector, uh, which start to have some commonalities uh, bon- uh, between state and big, 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 big companies, you know? 
Right. So this is also why we founded Bridgewater, because we want to give voice to entrepreneurship. We want to give voice to smaller companies. We, we want to put together smaller companies that are very creative, that uh, uh, want uh, to grow, want to create uh, new things. And we, we want to give them a space, a brand, to develop business and not only being dependent uh, with the, the, from, from the companies that uh, have well-reputed brands, but people that, uh, as I told you, are more engaged on internal things than looking at client needs. I, I love it and uh, it also talk, talks about the importance of having diversity that I know it's one of your fellows at um, Bridgewater uh, in the teams, right? So different ages, different genders, different nationalities, um, different profiles. Um, uh, we like to discuss here on the show as well, the builders and the scalers, the ones who like to optimize machines that are already working and the ones who want to create new machines and to innovate and there are different profiles, right? So, and, and typically say, don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? Uh, and this is typical uh, a sentence that I like to say, and let's double down on what works. But what I found out is that we need to have those, those both profiles on the team. So we need to have someone who is happy to start thinking about what is the next engine that will move us from 10 to 20 million or from 20 million to 50 or 50 to 100 or 100 to 1 B. Uh, and we need to have the, that one that is optimizing the, the machine that is already working to have the short term uh, growth that we also need to achieve that long term uh, growth. But I, I think that all of this connects with what you just said, which is the customer uh, centricity and having the clients first, right? Again, the framework that we discussed earlier uh, across the different stages of engagement with, with client attraction, acquisition, ARPU retention, and referrals for the ones who want to repeat that in, in their minds. I, I'm repeating because I'm also an avid consumer of podcasts. And uh, I like to, to when, when the, the, the host repeats and summarizes the, the, the knowledge of, uh, of the guests. So let's move into the third ingredient uh, to scale, the culture of execution uh, that is much more uh, related with the importance of alignment and having the rituals and the discipline, the narrative, the clarity to help teams to move into the same uh, direction. So on your experience, what were some of the rhythms that have been uh, critical to, to lead your teams or, or across the clients that you have the pleasure of advising? Uh, and Paul, let's start with, with you on this one. First, uh, let me uh, tell you something. To have a culture of execution, you need to have a culture of execution, okay? <laughs> uh, I like it. No, it's true because uh, uh, you need to create the rituals that create a dance, okay, be among people. Uh, you know that the, the difference uh, between a ritual and a routine, a routine is something that you repeat without thinking, and the ritual is something that you repeat for thinking. Okay, so uh, they are very different. So you need to transform the routines in rituals because you, you need to uh, challenge people to think again about the client. And the ritual are, uh, rituals are not only meetings. Rituals are uh, information that we exchange, uh, events that we develop. Uh, rituals come in many faces, okay, many perspectives. Um, for instance, the ritual of accumulating knowledge around the 20 levels of growth, uh, this type of things that you repeat, always creating content, okay? Um, you, you know that uh, I'm a ritual fan um, because I think we should uh, repeat uh, certain events that allows us to be uh, creative. I like to put together frameworks with freedom of thought. So if you put them together, you are creating rituals, not thinking about something that is not executable, but something that makes uh, some sense. So I would say that, uh, and then I can talk about that, we are creating uh, an ecosystem of people that are working with us 
and that makes our human part of Bridgewater. Uh, because as Anna was saying at the beginning, we combine a digital platform with a human platform. And this is one of the things that makes uh, Bridgewater unique, okay? Uh, because uh, you are uh, usually you are either full digital or full uh, human centered, and we combine both. Uh, so maybe Anna can complement what we are doing with uh, our ecosystem of uh, people, I would say, and the rituals that we are creating. We even uh, uh, just contracted a company just to do that. Okay, so uh, Anna, I don't know. Exactly. Now, now I'll, I'll tell you about it, but I'll also tell you. Um, as, as Paolo was saying, you have to feel the rituals. You have to feel that they, they make sense. And I'm going to tell you one thing that may surprise you or may surprise uh, some of the people that are listening, but it's what it is. So Paolo and I, we started developing this project back in, uh, in we started the conversation in January. We started developing the project back in February. Um, and Paolo and I have only met twice. We've never been together, never, ever. And we did everything. So the, and the reason why we, we were together was because we had to do two photo shootings for different reasons. And that's why we, 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 we met. We, we've never been together and uh, we have developed the full, um, the full model. We have clients, we, we're ready to go. In fact, we're gonna meet for the third time uh, on, on Thursday because uh, we will do the launch straight from Madrid. And as soon as we finish this podcast, I'll be on my way to Madrid. But, but just to, to see that it, that's possible. Now, so having said that, that also means that we do have rituals between us that, make, that made us develop this model. And one very simple ritual um, that we do every time is every meeting we have, after the meeting, and we started doing that very intuitively, and now we do it. Every meeting we have, we go back, and for three to five minutes, it never takes longer than that, we recap what happened. Who did, how did the meeting go? Uh, what was the need of the person that we were talking about? Do we want uh, to continue to work with that person? Does that person want to work with us? What have we learned? And we've been changing the model even with that. So just for you to understand, and we do it every time. And it's into it. We've never agreed to that, but now it's part of the ritual. Now, having said that, because I think it's a curious thing uh, that's not very normal, Absolutely. and I would like to say that. The that's other thing sure. is on, on what Paolo was saying on, uh, on this ecosystem of uh, great people that we are, putting together a part of our model, we have um, we, we have it based on this human network, which is mainly our affiliates and our advisors. So our advisors are very prestigious um, uh, personalities uh, that have a very long and, and well um, seen career uh, in this big companies in Portugal and Spain that can help our participants to develop. Those that, that have the subscription on Platinum can have four hours of, um, of advisory every month on a one-to-one, on -one, meaning the, 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 this, the advisor and the participant or its team. Um, and the associates, I mean, the affiliates, we have agents and, and associates. Uh, the difference is agents are companies and associates are uh, individuals. And I would focus more on, on, on the associates because that's the one that we are more developing now. Help us on the acquisition of, uh, of new participants and help us on the, on the success of these participants. They're also very prestigious um, professionals that know companies very well, that have good access and, and are capable of developing this profound conversation around growth. Now, uh, currently we already have approximately, so um, not, to, not to say approximately, let's say straight, we have 19, uh, five uh, advisors um, and, uh, and, and 14 um, uh, associates. Uh, so we already have this big team of people that we need to start to, to make them, uh, on, or put them on this machine and align. So our rituals go on to having regular meetings that we have already um, agreed. We have an onboarding for associates and an onboarding for, to start for, for, uh, for advisors. Um, we have uh, a, a kind of, a, it's like a, a, a conduct. It's, it's really a code of conduct that we share amongst yeah. us. And we have these regular meetings with a, with a, a, a certain agenda where we look at uh, also the tools that we have developed. Or, uh, we use uh, CRM uh, tools that we share with them. So um, yeah, it, it doesn't come by chance. Uh, we do do it. Yeah, just to, to add one more thing. We are a content company, okay? So one of the rituals that we are will be asking to our ecosystem is also to create articles and to create content around the 20 levers. 
this is one of the most important rituals, not only for our ecosystem of uh, affiliates and advisors, but for the participants as well. Is also something that makes Bridgewater different is that we uh, motivate uh, participants to publish around the 20 levers. Uh, and if you are a content company, you need to create content on a regular basis. Love it. And we, we came to the end of the show and I feel that I would stay here <laughs> for a, a longer time. There is so much uh, to cover and so much interesting uh, insights that you can share with the scale-up community. But let's go to our favorite question. So what advice would you offer to yourself if you had the opportunity to, meet, to, to, to get to, to have a meeting with yourself kind of 20 or 30 years ago at the beginning of your career. Uh, and uh, what advice would you offer to your younger self? Um, the advice uh, uh, has to do with what you've learned with yourself, right? So my main advice to myself is really the, uh, the key in, of success is in focus. So do focus uh, on what you believe. Love it. And Paolo, what about you? Well, I would say be truthful, <laughs> which is uh, be free, uh, be ambitious. Uh, something that is said and not executed is nothing. Be substantive uh, rather than adjective. Uh, well, all these kind of things that uh, are related to, uh, I would say, uh, go further and growth as a human being, uh, but especially be free. Love it, focus and freedom. Uh, that's a great way of uh, closing the show. Uh, Anne and Paolo, thank you so much for making the time to, um, to join the, the podcast. Thank you, thank you. Mike. It was, it was a pleasure. great, yeah. Thank you and wish you uh, a lot of success with Bridgewater. You are always welcome to the show uh, to share the progress uh, with, with Bridgewater. And we wish you uh, an amazing launch uh, on Thursday, uh, the 21st of January. And to our community, we keep bringing you the best of the best to help your scale your business from 1 million to 1 trillion. So you are able to leverage their mistakes and their lessons on your favor. So we keep here serving you. See you soon and keep scaling.